You will not have a successful business if your life is in chaos, okay? You know, I have this funny saying all the time. I say, you cannot have order amidst clutter. And some of us have gotten really comfortable with our cluttery offices, our cluttery homes. Well, we can't have a cluttery office or a cluttered home and think we're gonna have the kind of order and success that is consistent and that's dependable. And it's the same thing with our lives. Now, I'm gonna tell you about this woman, this person. She's a wife, mother, and a caretaker. She has over 20 plus years in the mortgage industry, much experience. She's highly sought after. Uh, she's uh, hosting a, a local real estate radio show. So she has customers calling her every day of the week, all day, every single day. Uh, she's managing a branch of eight loan officers. Every loan officer in that branch is new to the industry. They had no experience prior to coming uh, to work for this woman. Her business grows by more than 100% each year. So one year she does 5 million, the next year she does 10 million, the next year she does 20 million, and so on and so forth. And she serves black and brown home buyers in underserved communities. So this is what's happening in her life. And this is what's also happening in her business. So if we were to go around this and kind of look at, look at it like a clock, here's what's happening. Here's the pain and the frustration. My business is the center of my existence and my life must adjust to my business. So I couldn't go to cheerleading competitions or this person couldn't go to the games or she may have had to back out of family events because the business was there first front and center. Here are the other issues. The value that she's providing to her clients and to her uh, business partners is inconsistent. Why? Because she gets burned out. She works really hard, long hours, uh, you know, 24 hour days, <laughs> it, it seems like sometimes. And so the quality of what she does diminishes over time because she just gets too tired to keep up that pace. The income is not stable. At the end of the year, the W-2 looks okay. But again, there were seasons of earning money and there were seasons where none was earned at all. And so she's finding herself frustrated with her finances and she's finding herself not necessarily looking like the kind of customer that she's teaching about. She's telling her customers, get your credit in order, get your uh, money together, save and, and have an emergency fund. But she doesn't always have that for herself. That's something that's very consistent in this industry, in the mortgage business, where the people we're serving, we're not necessarily living up to that ourselves. That's a point of pain and frustration. Also, because of that, you're not living what it is that you want to teach. So what are the motivations and what are the goals? My life is the center of my existence. And so I can have balance in my life and my business can fit around that life. I can provide consistent and predictable value to my clients and partners. As a result of the master achievement plan and everything that I'm doing to learn better, to be better and to do better, I'm earning the income that will allow me to create generational wealth. That's so important to me. So now I can look like what I'm talking about. I'm not just preaching, I am practicing what I preach and I'm a good example to my customers, to the community that I serve, and of course, to my family and to the people who I love. So I am living what I teach and I am teaching what I live. That's the goal that we're looking to get to. So how do you map your life? You will not have a life that you value if your business runs it. I remember, and this is a funny story about that woman. And of course, she's me. <laughs> she started out with these goals and dreams and wanting to be great in the mortgage business. And then eventually the business was running her and then that didn't work. And somehow she found a way to get some balance and some order. I remember having my second child and I was uh, in the hospital and I knew it was gonna be several hours before uh, that time was gonna come. So this is how much my business was running my life. I told my husband, grab my laptop, I'm gonna pull credit reports. And so the news had gotten out that I was in the hospital having a baby. My referral partners were telling my customers and I called a customer to ask her something about her credit. And she said, Lynn, I thought you were in the hospital having a baby. I said, yeah, but what does that have to do with you? Now, certainly it showed my commitment 
but things were a little out of balance. Now, I yes, I love my job and I love helping people get into homes, but of course there should be some boundaries and some balance. So what's important about life to you? When you start to think about what is your life and what does it mean? If you were able to stand up in front of the world and say, this is what life means to me, then that probably is gonna direct you in your life purpose. It's very important to know what's important about life to you. Why? Because it's going to dictate how you run your entire life and how you run your entire business. Let me give you an example. I remember being in the mortgage industry and I asked this question of one of my colleagues and my colleague, the answer was money. Money was the most important thing. And so I'm not saying that's right or wrong, but for me, it was helping people. So my entire business was set up to help people. My life was set up to help people. My colleague's life and my colleague's business was set up to make money. So I remember back in those days, my colleague would charge uh, an astronomical amount of points for every single loan. Well, when interest rates began to rise and the refinance market went away, that next year, my partner almost went out of business because my partner was focused only on making money, whereas I was focused on helping people. And so I was able to get referral business and I was able to tap into my incubator, which I'll talk to you a little bit about and have repeat business coming back to me. So what's important about life to you? You should answer that question and know what that is. And that should be the center of everything you do. It's the reason why I started teaching home buyer classes. It's the reason why I started teaching people how to get their credit straight. It's the reason why even if someone came to me and could not get a mortgage today, it's the reason why I put them in an incubator because you'll be able to buy your house in six months, nine months, a year or two years. And I wanna be here to help you when you're ready. When does your life need to change? That's a real, uh, sometimes it causes tears because you're looking at the things in your life. What is it that you wanna change? Do you need more quality time with your spouse? Do you need to repair a relationship with a significant other or a sibling or a parent or, or a, 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 a child or, or someone that you've lost contact with? Is your, are your finances where you want them to be? Is your bank account saying what you want it to say? You see, when you first identify what's important about life to you, and then you move on in this exercise and you're honest with yourself about the things that you want to change, what you realize is you cannot fix what you will not face. And I remember writing this long list of things that I wanted to change and I started crying. I was like, oh my God, my life is so terrible. But the truth is thoughts disentangle themselves when they pass through your fingertips and I needed to get those things out of my head onto paper so I could see them, so I could do something about it. Here's the next step in mapping your life. What does your life look like in its ideal state? What is your vision of perfection? What do you see? Do you see a world-class business? Do you see a whole team of, of originators in your city, your state, your region? Do you see growing up uh, the, the food chain, if you will, and, and getting a promotion? And do, What is it that you see? What is that ideal thing? One of the things that I say is you have to aim high. As a matter of fact, my big brother, Les Brown, always says, I want you to aim high because even if you miss, I'd rather you aim high and miss than aim low and hit, right? So what is that ideal vision for your finances, the ideal vision for your life? the ideal vision for your spirituality, the ideal of vision for your family. What are those things looking like in their ideal state? After you do that in the map and in the life mapping process, one of the things that you do is let's just say, for example, in your ideal state, you want to get a PhD, but today you don't have a, a GED. So the 60 day goal is to get into a GED class and the daily activities are the things that you do to make sure that you can get to that class. And then after 60 days, you create a new goal and eventually you continue doing this mapping process until your vision of perfection is now a reality. What are your triggers? Where are your triggers? Do you um, get triggered uh, emotionally 
Um, is there something going on with your weight? Is there some uh, unresolved issue that you may have in your business? Is there an area of your business where you want to grow or in your life where you want to grow? And uh, perhaps uh, you need to take a class in order to get better in that area. Where are your triggers? What makes you happy? What makes you sad? What makes you thoughtful? What are those things that drive you to be better and to do better? Know where your triggers are. Who gets a ticket to the screenplay of your life? Who's in the front row cheering you on? Who doesn't get a ticket at all? And this is not necessarily about, uh, you know, cutting anyone off or making a big announcement, but know who gets a front seat in your life. Because as you begin to build this world-class business and as you begin to earn the income, then you also want to be in the presence of people you enjoy. And many times we are not getting where we want to go in life and business because there are people in our lives who are draining us. So when you start to map out your life, you want to know who are the people who you're going to allow in the front row, who's going to sit in the balcony. Let me tell you the beautiful thing about the balcony. In the balcony, they can see you, but you can't see them, right? So maybe they're in the balcony and maybe they don't get a ticket at all. How are you going to set boundaries? What are you going to say yes to? What are you going to say no to? I had to establish boundaries. That woman that we talked about earlier with this origination business and this life that's kind of out of control and she's trying to get it back in control. I had to say yes to some things. I had to say no to some things. I had to tell my children on a Saturday morning, I'm not going to get up at 6 a.m. to cook you breakfast. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> right. So what are your boundaries? How are we going to share the chores? How are we going to share uh, the life activities that we all enjoy? Who's going to have responsibility over what? And how are we going to divvy up this thing called life? Upon completion of your life map, you will have a blueprint for executing the goals that you want to achieve in your life. The most beautiful thing about mapping your life is once you're done, you becomes very clear what you're going to do. You don't wake up on any day saying, what am I going to do today? Why? Because you have identified what's important. You know when your life needs to change. You are looking at it in its ideal state. So you have a why. You know what you're aiming for. You know what your triggers are. You have your 60-day goals, your daily activities, and it ends up being a very beautiful thing.